Ladies and gentlemen, please go wild, go crazy for Mr. Lee! <laughs> You're getting real embarrassed now. <laughs> oh, and a whistle as well from over there. Who did that whistle? I did. Who did? Do it again. <laughs> right, now this here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wax out, doesn't it? Oh, there. <laughs> oh, I'm running out of holes. <laughs> now. <laughs> next one does it. I'm going to shit myself, aren't I? You know. <laughs> I've just got to un unload first of all. I've got a few medical requirements to plop down here. Bear with me for a minute. I've got an hanky as well. I brought, I brought a hanky. I've had, have you had the cold that's been going there? Yeah? yeah. You had that cold. It's really weird when you get a cold, right? It's just because I'm getting over it. When you, when you get a cold, right, you start off, don't you? And you've got like, you undo a box of Kleenex, don't you? And you sort of go like that. You pop it open, and there are a hundred in there, aren't there? So you're a little bit frivolous at first, don't you? <laughs> you just get one cheesy rat and go, oh, that's finished, yeah. <laughs> Then you get down to about five, don't you? And then you start getting desperate, don't you? You've got it out, you go, well, there's a dry bit there. <laughs> you know, longer wiping your nose, it's like a flannel wash, isn't it, you know? <laughs> then you finish with them and then you start on the toilet paper and you might as well just get some sandpaper and grate your fucking nose. <laughs> Anyway, so I've had that, but I'm not feeling too bad now, which is good. And I've also got this with me as well, because I've, I've got this, like, this is brilliant, this is a hypochondriac's wet dream. <laughs> I've got 400 people in a room and I've got a fucking mic, you know. I've got, uh, I've got asthma, anybody got asthma? Yeah, about four people. <laughs> Probably more of you here, but you're just too weak to put your hands up. Ain't you? <laughs> Have you got, who, who has got asthma? Who put their hands up who's got asthma? There's a lady here. Have you got one of these? Not with you. What, are you a fucking hard asthmatic? What? <laughs> How does that work out there? Did you sort of set yourself a little challenge at home, you know, sort of like, I'll leave that there, like that, and I'll just watch a bit of telly, and then just see if I can make it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and if I get away with that, I'll put it in the kitchen. Oh, I'm a daredevil, me. <laughs> I've got one of these. I, I remember the day I went to my doctor's and I said, Doc, I'm not feeling very well, right? So, which is a traditional opening to a doctor conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and like, he says to me, he goes to me, what, he goes, what's that? He, says, he goes, take all your clothes off, take all your clothes off. So I did, right? And then he said, do you mind if a student sits in? Right? Now, normally no, but it was a geography student, right? <laughs> I didn't really see the need for that, but... Anyway, he does, he does the, uh, the, the investigation on me and he says, Lee, he says, I've got some bad news for you. He says, you've got asthma and this is caused by the house dust mite. This is a tiny invisible creature that lives in the carpet. Right? And I believed him. Because <laughs> you basically believe any shit your doctor shovels out of you, don't you? He says, little house dust mite. And to prove it existed, right, he, he brought out a picture of the house dust mite and it had been exploded 50,000 times, right? And there was this creature there, right? I thought, can you imagine being a photographer who got that gig? <laughs> yeah, come in, come in. Yeah. We want you to photograph the house dust mite. It's a tiny visible creature and it lives in the carpet. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Click. <laughs> and he takes a picture. It takes him three, four days to develop it, and it is ruined because there are two house dust mites, and one's behind the other going. <laughs> but you do believe what they say. You go in there, oh, doctor, I've got a headache. Ah, oh, that's a small demon living in your ear. <laughs> Just take it on board, don't you? It's like all these women who have the smear tests that go wrong, you know what I mean? It's like they're looking down going, are you supposed to be doing that with your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> You've got the doctor looking up going, trust me, I'm the doctor. <laughs> so he said to me, he goes, Lee, you've got asthma. He says, you're going to need one of these, an inhaler. He said, take it away with you. Don't worry, they're not addictive. <laughs> they fucking are. <laughs> You take this everywhere with you. Everywhere you go, you take it with you. You're, you're tied to it. Everywhere you go with it, like you know, because I, I don't know if you know this. You can actually die from asthma. I don't know if you know. Did you know you could die from asthma? You did know. I'm, I'm glad you did. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know, I'd have fucking made your night out, wouldn't I? <laughs>
I'm gonna come here for a night out. I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> you take it everywhere you go, and it's like it's horrible when you first have to take this in public, right? Because it's hardly inconspicuous, is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you sort of carry it with you. Like you'd be, you might be at a party. You're in company at a party, right? You're mingling at the party. <laughs> you're sort of standing there. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> uh. 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 I don't know why you're thinking I'm starting to turn blue now, right? <laughs> so you give in, you go, pss, pss. <sighs> that's good, I can breathe again now, you know. And I like breathing, I think it's a bare minimum, really, you know. <laughs> and the trouble is, you start to equate the Ventolin with being able to breathe okay, right? And then I've got this nightmare scenario that I'm going to be walking down the street late one night and this mad psychopathic strangler is going to jump out of an alleyway, grab me by the throat, start choking me, and I'm thinking, hmm, time for the Ventolin. <laughs> <laughs> but it just gets you after a while. I mean, it's, it's really weird, because, like, you get... Um, if you have to get a really bad asthma attack, right, you have to go to a hospital, to your local casualty department, right? And uh, there's this weird thing I've noticed. Whenever I have a really bad asthma attack, I, I find I have, to, I have to have a wee, right? Now, I don't know particularly why. I mean, have we got any medical people here? Any doctors or nurses here tonight? There's a, a, some, somebody over there. Are you a doctor or a nurse now? You're a nurse, right? I mean, you know, in, it's actually a doctor I was looking for, but thank you for... <laughs> you, know, you know, maybe you can change my bed sheets, but I... <laughs> Fuck you, I've pulled. Now, <laughs> no, what it is, right? It's like, have, have, have any of your friends medical people as well? They're all nurses. Are there any doctors with you at all? You don't need doctors. You know more than them. All oh, right, that's why they get the big money. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you know more than them medically, but business wise, they're fucking crucifying you, aren't they? <laughs> I just find it, it's like, when I, when I go, like, I have this really, I have this urge to have a wee, right? And so you go to the casualty department, I'm in there, I'm in there, in the, you know, you get that little curtain behind you in the casualty department, and I'm sitting there, I'm busting to do a wee, right? So I get up, I go to walk out, and the doctor goes, where are you going, Mr Hurst? I said, I'm just going off to the toilet, have a wee. He said, stay where we are, Mr Hurst, we'll fetch you a bottle. <laughs> and he brings one of them funny-shaped bottles over. You know, a funny-shaped bottle with a flat bit and the hole in the top. Have you ever used one of these bottles in casualty, right? I mean, obviously, I'm talking to the blokes now on this one. <laughs> Even out of some very game women. <laughs> Just put a few down on the floor and run round over the top. <laughs> oh, I've got some in that one. <laughs> There's a drop in there as well. Oh, fuck, I think I've drowned a house dust mite, look. There was something weird about using, using one of those bottles in a casualty department behind that little curtain that improves your hearing. <laughs> Is that not right? When you're standing there with your willy inside a glass tube, you can hear a nurse laugh within a five-mile radius. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, dear. I've got to keep drinking as well, because not only have I had the cold, I'm just... <laughs> sorry, I'm just burdening you with my problems now. Not only have I had the cold, right? Little dehydrated. I've, I've had, I've had, the, I've had the shits, right? I, <laughs> I could be polite and waste your time and go, oh, I've had a dodgy tubby, <laughs> but even that'd be inaccurate, wouldn't it? I should be going, oh, I've had a dodgy arsehole. <laughs> Basically, if I say I've had the shits, we all know what I'm talking about, and we can just move on, right? <laughs> I think your doctor should say that as well. You're going, you're like, what's the matter with me, doctor? Well, you got the shits. <laughs> Don't I get a fancy Latin name? <laughs> Fuck off, you got the shits. <laughs> and a mate of mine, he, he rescued me with this medicine, right? And it says on a... I love this, about the medicine for your stomach, and it says on a bottle, warning, may darken your stool, right? <laughs> and when I read that, I think, why do they feel the need to warn me about that potential outcome? <laughs> Which one of you people is checking their shit that regularly <laughs> that this could upset your working day? Who stands up off the lid, looks back and goes, Oh, I'll do the kitchen that colour. <laughs> what if you ever walk down the street and somebody's come running out of the house? Ah! What's about a poo different colour? <laughs> if only I'd been warned. <laughs> so I've got the asthma, I've got that. Do you know about me bad back? <laughs> you know about me bad back? <laughs> I bet you're glad you came out. <laughs> 
I have. I've got this. I've got this. I'll, t- I'll tell you about it. Right? Basically, I've got this disease in my spine, right? And it's an incurable disease. And what's, it's called ankylosing spondylitis, right? And what's happening? All the ver- If you imagine that's my vertebrae, right? Like that. They're all kind of fusing together, like that, gradually over the years. Like, it's incurable. And if you, you see some old blokes walking down the street and they might be a little bit bent over like that, right? They could well have ankylosing spondylitis, right? Because what it does over the years, it kind of turns you over the years. So it makes you go forward like that, right? I mean, it's, obviously, it takes a long time for that to happen. It doesn't happen overnight, you know what I mean? I've got this horrible feeling at about 55. I'm gonna be, it's like you're doing the world's slowest fucking somersault, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I've got this idea I'll hit 55 and I'll just do that final roll <laughs> and six guys will jump up from behind a fence. 8.9, 8.6. <laughs> but it's to say, that's what it does. It, it turns you over like that and it just... Uh, don't, does your spine a bit. And the weird thing about it, I mean, I believe, right, it's incurable, I right, say, and I believe anybody who's got an incurable illness, you should be positive about it, right? You should look for the positive in anything in life, particularly with an incurable illness. Because the way I look at it, right, is all right, so yeah, so my posture may go, go wonky. I mean, if you're lucky, you can end up with posture like that, they call it poker back, right? But if you're unlucky, it'll turn you over the years, it'll gradually turn you, gradually turn you, gradually turn you. And I say, be positive, right? Because the way I look at it, <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at it, I reckon eventually, if I turn yay far, I could give myself a blowjob. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, knowing my luck, it'd fuse at that point and I'd have to fucking swallow as well. <laughs> I read this story, right, is this woman, she suffered from ankylosing spondylitis, right, it's predominant in men, right, a few women get it, it's, it's, it's quite rare in women, but one or two women do get it, sadly, and this woman, she's got, her neck had fused like that quite badly, right, and they did an operation on that, it was on the front page of the Daily Telegraph on a Saturday last year, I swear to God, and it said there, doctors, doctor, basically, right, I'll paraphrase it, right, basically, to, to upright her head, right, and make her straight again, they chopped her fucking head off. <laughs> They, exactly, I picked up, I went, oh. <laughs> You know what I mean? I sort of, I saw the top of the headline, I thought, no, oh, the stomach, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, give me, oh, warning, mate, don't on your stool. No, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and it did, they said they chopped, they said, what they did, they chopped her head off, like, uprighted it, fixed it with a plate, and sorted her out, right? And they went, this was a marvellous advance in medical science. I thought, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, the doctor was pissed, wasn't he? <laughs> Can you imagine it, middle of the operation? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck hell, where'd it go? Where's the fuck? Oh, shit, it's under the cupboard. It's under the cupboard. Give me a ruler. Give me a ruler. <laughs> Come here, you airy little fucker. Come on. God, oh, shit, it's got a fluff on it. <laughs> Put it back on, she's just thinking it's a perm. <laughs> Imagine next morning a woman woke up and said, how do you feel? Just say yes, don't nod. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But so I went up, recently I went to the doctors because I thought, if, if you're feeling rough, obviously you've got to go to the doctors, right? So I went there, I thought, go and get a medical done at the doctors, right? So I go in to the doctors and he'd done a full medical on me, right? He's checked me weight, he checked me heart rate, and then he did the blood pressure, right? And I, I don't like having the blood pressure done. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Because, oh. mate, you roll up your sleeve, don't they? You roll up your sleeve, and then they bring out what I can only describe as the inner tube of an articulated lorry. <laughs> and they wrap it round your arm, don't they? And you sit there, and you think to yourself, that is a bit tight. <laughs> Not tight enough for the doctor, though. <laughs> doctor brings out a puffy thing. I don't know if that is the correct medical term. <laughs> <laughs> Nurse, fetch me the puffy thing. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you mean, doctor. <laughs> Has he got the shits? He <laughs> <laughs> brings out the puffy thing and he goes, puff, 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 puff. And your arm goes, <laughs> <laughs> And at that point, every bloke in this room looks down and thinks, I wonder. <laughs> Then what does the doctor do? Does the blood pressure. Then he does this. Brings out a beaker. He goes, give us a urine sample. And into the nurse on the way out. <laughs> now, for the doctor, that is just an everyday working phrase. But for you and me, that is the start of a fucking nightmare. <laughs> 
Because they give you the little beaker, don't they? It's about that big, isn't it, the beaker? It's about that big, and you look at it, don't you? And you go, well, most of that's going over my hand. <laughs> I might as well just have a piss, pat the nurse on the head as I leave. <laughs> what is the point in giving a bloke a hole that big to piss in? <laughs> Women know blokes can't piss in holes that fucking big. <laughs> He gives you the beaker, right? And you get the beaker, they don't, don't give you no instructions, nothing, do they? You have to work out your own system, don't you? So you're there, isn't you? you're trying to work it out. And, and if you notice, there's always too much wee for the beaker, isn't it? <laughs> they need a longer beaker, that's what I feel. Deeper beaker, that's what you want. Too much wee for the beaker. You've never done it before, so you get the beaker there, and you have a little wee, don't you? And you have to stop yourself. I don't know how the women do it, but for blokes, we sort of go, eep. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're trying to get the lid on, you go, I've got to get rid of this, fuck it. <laughs> And you put a little lid on the beaker, don't you? You put it on, you've never done it before. You put a little lid on the beaker and you're holding it. And the first thing you think is, oh, fuck me, that's warm. <laughs> Surely that is too hot to be healthy. <laughs> I mean, how tough is my penis? <laughs> I never felt that coming out. I can barely hold this. <laughs> Why am I checking the bath water with my elbow? <laughs> Then you get all embarrassed, don't you? You get all embarrassed. You think, oh, I can't hand this to the nurse like this. So you take a slow walk down the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, love won't scold your hand on that one, all right? <laughs> I said to my doctor, I said, why do you take the urine sample? He said to me, we get loads of information from the urine sample. I'm thinking, why do we bother sending a CV to a job interview? <laughs> we should just open the door, piss all over the bus. That's everything you need to fucking know. <laughs> Will you let me know if I got the job? <laughs> I don't know if you know this, right, but in the, in the government, in the event of a nuclear attack on this country, the government is going to issue every single one of us with a civil defence pamphlet, right? <laughs> now, the missiles take four minutes to get here, so Postman Pat, under a bit of pressure there. <laughs> Black and white cat, you best take some as well. <laughs> Where's your fur? <laughs> From now on, you're pink cat. Fucking cats. Fucking furry little fucks. Give me fucking asthma. Fuck you. <laughs> I fucking hate them, I really do, right? What, what I'll do, I'll go around gluing up cat flaps, right? And then when they tease a dog and run at home, whack! They... <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I saw a story in a paper, a woman moaning because she lost her three-legged cat, right? I thought, what are you moaning for? Ain't like you lost a whole cat. <laughs> <laughs> if he likes it that much, he should have chopped the other three legs off, he wouldn't have fucking got away. <laughs> You'd have had a snake cat, wouldn't you? That ain't going nowhere. A lot fucking easier to stomp one of them. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> dogs I love. I love dogs. Dogs are brilliant. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Cats, give me my dinner, fuck off and leave me alone. <laughs> Anybody got a dog? Yeah, you can put your hand up. I'm not going to ask you to move it, you know what I mean? <laughs> can you move your dog? It's blocking the car. <laughs> What's the registration? <laughs> oh. For the dog owners, I don't know if you know this, if you're, there's a new law coming out. If your dog has a poo on the pavement, it's a £2,000 fine. If your dog takes a dump, a two grand fine. Now, what's indecent exposure? About three, four hundred quid. If a copper turns up, drop your trousers and pants and go, oh, I've done that. <laughs> Save you a fortune, wouldn't it? Mind you, the cop will probably make you drag your ass along the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I love all those stories about dangerous dogs as well, don't I? You see these, every now and again you have a story in a paper about a dangerous dog. 
and it, these with these laws about the Dangerous Dog Act and all this right. And they'll say like, and they say, oh, you're a dangerous dog who was out without a muzzle, who has to be executed. And the bloke goes, but he was in the car. He goes, yes, but he was driving. <laughs> <laughs> And they do, they always say they're going to execute the dog, don't they? But if you notice, they never actually execute the dog. Because you can't execute a dog, can you? You cannot hang a dog. <laughs> you put a noose around his neck, string him up, three, four minutes goes by, dog goes, we're going to go for a walk or what? <laughs> I've got trees to piss up, legs to shag. I'm a busy dog. <laughs> I've got to tell you this, I... Um, I did this gig, right, uh, about a year and a half ago. I went out to Thailand and did a gig, right, for this company. They, they, check this out. See if you can spot the floor in this plan, right? And uh, they flew me to Thailand to do a 30-minute comedy act to 80 British blokes that they also flew out there. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by. Cheers. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Well, if she's leaving it, fuck it, I'll have it. (laughs) (sighs) It's fucking warm in here, isn't it? (laughs) What's your name? Nicola. Nicola, what's your friend's name you just left? That's not my friend. (laughs) Fucking hell, here we go. (laughs) What's your name, mate? Tim. Tim, what's your friend's name? He just left. Ali. Alan. Oh, Ali. <laughs> Ali. 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 I thought he said Alan. So I was going to say. I mean, the way uh, I was figuring, the way Alan was dressed, I wonder what toilet he was going to. Yeah. <laughs> it's your skirt up over the urinal, I suppose. But I mean, you're bound to drop a bit and get it wet, ain't you? You know. So what does she do, Ali? Teacher. She's a teacher. She never put a fucking hand up to leave, did she? Did you know? <laughs> Well, let's just see how long it takes her, shall we? <laughs> let's just see how long it takes Ellie. She should have gone before she came out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've ruined Ellie's evening now, Tim, you know. She's probably never going to come back again now, yeah. And she's left a bag there. Can we just check that bag has not got anything in it that... <laughs> Now, bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing this purely for security purposes. (laughs) I fucking broke it already. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. (sighs) Oh, how did you get this one to come on? Oh, she's probably got a secret code in it or something. She's a teacher. How do you, how's that work, Tim? <laughs> Is it yours anyway? Oh, right. <sighs> oh, dear. So, uh, why didn't you put your hand up to ask? <laughs> As you're a teacher. <laughs> so, are you primary school or secondary school? Primary, primary school. Little tiny children. Little <laughs> tiny <tiny> children. <laughs> Do you teach them from, like, when they're in the infants? Do you teach them from the infants? I actually remember my first day of school, because like, my mum... <laughs> my mum took... Because, like, it's weird, isn't it? Because, like, you're about, what is it, five, isn't it? Or something, when you start school, right? And your mum just take, you know, you, just, you leave house. You, you don't know, do you? You don't know that you're going to school, do you? You've, you've not heard the word, you don't know what it is, you don't know me, right? As far as you're concerned, you're walking along with your mum, ain't you? Yeah, well, we've done this before, yeah? 
we, we've left the house before there. Eh? You know, that's all right, I'm all right with that. And then your mum just takes you along, and you're quite happy. She's with your mum, and you're holding her hand, and you're quite happy. And she just walks up to school, and she's like, open the door, and you go, there you go, and she fucks off like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're all there, and you're thinking, uh, something not right here. Yeah? <laughs> we leave house, we fucking return to house. So you just rugby tackle your mum. <laughs> I've got around the legs and she's going, fuck off back there. <laughs> fuck off <laughs> back there. Get yourself an education, get a good job. She fucking lied to me then, right? <laughs> and I remember it vividly, right? She, she put me in there, she put me in the school. And like, I'm fucking, mama! I was screaming at me, and I'm like, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And she's like, no, you've got to do this, this is, we all do it, stay. I love you, I love you, I love you. And she goes, look, 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 cousin Mickey, Lego, Lego. And what she pointed out was one of the kids was playing with some Lego, right? And my cousin Mickey, he had Lego, right? But we couldn't afford it, so I never had it. So whenever we went around cousin Mickey's house, I used to play with Lego. So she's going, look, Lego, Lego. And I'm going, ah, 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 And now my mum's starting to go, it's like a fucking baby. <laughs> I'm going, yeah, but mum, pieces of moulded plastic, come on! <laughs> the fire drill, you have to do the fire drill, don't you? For the kiddies, right? They like said, right, what's going on? It means the bell, bell will sound, and it's the fire alarm. And what you must do, when that sounds, you must all run out into the playground and line up in alphabetical order. I'm going, yeah, 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 fuck it, right, yeah, 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 right. Ding, 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 and we're out, we're all out, we're out, we're out, we're out, we're out, we're all in the playground. <gasps> what the fuck's alphabetical order? <laughs> It's day one, we ain't done no shit yet, we really, you know. Apart from play with plasticine in a line, I don't know if that helps, you know. And they used to do that every, every couple of weeks. Like, fire alarm, off it went the bell, out in the school playground, line up in the line. Fire alarm, off it went the bell, out in the school playground, line up. And we got it fucking brilliant. In the end, we were slick. We were like Ben Johnson coming out of the starting blocks. We were the business, right? And we were like, as soon as that fire alarm went off, we're out there in the playground. Fire alarm went off, out in the playground. Until that tragic day that there was a fire in the school playground. <laughs> An eventuality that I hadn't been prepared for. <laughs> oh dear. So, you're a teacher. Oh, they're coming to get you for not putting your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I heard at one stage, Ellie, they were talking about doing performance related pay for teachers. Have you heard about this? Performance related pay, for it's ridiculous, isn't it? How can you have performance related pay for teachers, right? <laughs> Once the kids get older, that, they're going to be running a protection racket, aren't they? <laughs> Detention at 3.30, sir? <laughs> I don't think so, sir. <laughs> you do want a pay packet at the end of the week? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what I was talking about before you left there. Anyway, I'll talk about any old... I, get, I, talk, I talk bollocks, really, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's fucking brilliant. Because when I was at school, it's like, it's what I do, essentially, for a living is take the piss, don't I? And uh, when I did that at school, they used to, like, send me out of class for it. I would take the piss, they'd send me out of class, and now I fucking get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to track down that old teacher, because they used to say to me, Hurst, what are you going to do when you leave school? I'm <laughs> fuck it, this. <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing this interview one time with this, this journalist, which was for the Liverpool Echo, I think, and he was interviewing me for the tour and, and doing some publicity, and he went to me, he goes, um, he said, it's all like, uh, you know, because he was scouser, right? And uh, I'll do it all. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, it was like, uh, you know, we like, uh, do you tell jokes at school, like, you know? And I went, yeah, you know, like, they used to tell jokes, no more or less than other kids, you know? Like, were you like the class clown, like, you know? Like, class clown? <laughs> like, walk in with a red nose on, you know? <laughs> Dad drives up outside the school, drops me off, car doors fall off, you know. <laughs> and then he did the classic. He said, did you used to use comedy to fend off the bullies? Because that's that thing, isn't it? It's that old story that you used to tell jokes at school to fend off the bullies. And I went, no. I said, no, I didn't do that at all. I said, no, I think that's a myth anyway. I said, and if it isn't a myth, I think you leave that behind you at school. I can't believe you'd be walking along the street late one night and a man jumps out of an alleyway with a machete and you go, two fellas go into a pub. <laughs> Yeah. God, I'm, I'm leaking up here. <laughs> Not all over, thank God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If I had hair, oh, it'd be a state, wouldn't it? <laughs> Talking to me, I'm, I'm worried. I, I've got to be honest with you, I've, I'm, I'm worried. I get like, aches and pains out. I'm worried about getting old now. 
I've started to worry about getting old because, like, things they don't tell you about getting old, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, here's a, here's a for instance. Here's a for instance. Do you remember when you used to watch Top of the Pops with your dad? And your dad would be sitting there going, oh, this is shit. <laughs> this is crap. Well, I'm doing it now as well. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, oh, this is shit. <laughs> this is crap. But what's even more sad is, I'm sitting there on my own. <laughs> It's not, it's not all music. I, I, I'll be honest with you, some of the Top of the Pop stuff, I like, I like soul and swing. That's the kind of music I'm into, right, R&B. I mean, but the music, oh, the one that does my fucking brain in, right? Have we got any, anybody here like rave? Anybody like rave music? Respect to this audience, that's what I can say. <laughs> rave music, techno music, what is that? <laughs> Do you write that or just sit in a fucking traffic jam? What? <laughs> It's ridiculous, right? There's that big debate, isn't there? Because rave music, house rave music, whatever they call it, right? It's all, it's all like connected with drugs, isn't it? The taking of ecstasy, right? And there's always that debate about what's the connection between rave music and ecstasy? What's the connection between the music and the drugs, right? Does the drugs influence music? Music influences the drugs. What's the connection? You don't need to have that, that debate, yeah. We can nail it right now. I'll tell you what the connection is. That music is such a pile of old bollocks <laughs> that the only way those kids can stay in that club for any length of time is to be off their fucking tits. <laughs> You've got the bouncers searching them on the way in. You got any drugs? No, here's some. It's fucking crap in there. <laughs> they discovered ecstasy early part of this century. A German chemist discovered it and they tested it as an appetite suppressant, right? And the reason they binned it is it causes brain damage, liver damage, heart damage. And their kids are taking it for a good night out. <laughs> Something's gone seriously fucking wrong since I was a teenager. <laughs> Back in the late 70s, a good night out for a young lad around the East End. Very simple. You just went out, got pissed, got a kebab, try and get a shag. <laughs> that was it. Preferably, you got the shag before the kebab. <laughs> <laughs> there was a certain code you had to observe, you know. <laughs> I think every bloke in this room will admit that buying a kebab on a Saturday night is a final admission that you're not going to pull. <laughs> even, even the kebab shop owner joins in the fun, doesn't he? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, you're standing there all bleary-eyed. He's going, would you like chilli sauce on your no-sex evening? <laughs> but I am worried about getting old. Loads of it. One of the reasons I'm worried... I'll tell you, the main reason I'm worried about getting old is this. You know your dad can't dance. <laughs> now, is that a gradual thing? <laughs> does that creep up on you over a number of years? Or does it just go bang, hit you in a club one night? You know? You're out on the dance floor having a great time, all of a sudden... <laughs> Club's got a special member of staff who walks up. Off you come, mate. Come on, off you. <laughs> there you go. You'd be spending a lot more time with the family now. Off you go. <laughs> I'm worried about getting old. It's like, it's like this. Things I don't tell you. Things I do not tell you about getting old, right? Is I'm, I'm, I've got uh, hairs growing out of my ears. Hair's grown out my nose. My eyebrows are going fucking berserk. <laughs> right? I've got hairy chest, hairy back, hairy arms, hairy legs. I've come to the conclusion I'm not actually bald. <laughs> my hair is just lost. <laughs> I've got a full head of hair evenly distributed over my entire body. <laughs> what I need is a little cowboy hair to round them up, bring them back home to the ranch. <laughs> Imagine it. Do, 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 do. Watch the ravine. <laughs> <laughs> Who's bald? Hands up all the bald guys tonight. <laughs> Pretty sure it's no good fucking hiding, lads. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to sit on your face and stick your ass in here, you're not going to get away with it. <laughs> Hands up all the bald guys. You, but what's your name, gentlemen? At the back. Grant, listen, Grant, you'll back me up on this. You know when we go to the barbers, right? Now, me and Grant, as you can see, we ain't got much hair, but what we have got needs cutting. You've got to trust us on that, right? <laughs> when we go to the barbers, what I don't think is fair, we have to queue up with the hairy guys. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, you're standing in a queue, right? They're up there, 25, 30 minutes each. They wash the hair, they cut the hair, they dry the hair. Me and Grant walk up, 25, 30 seconds tops. <laughs> Bzz, done. But we have to queue up, so you can imagine it. I'm in a queue, I'm British, so I'm fucking moaning. <laughs> I have to, it's a legal requirement. <laughs> I could lose my citizenship if I don't. 
I'm sitting there, bloke next to me, I'm thinking, he's got loads of hair, that bloke, isn't he? He's going to fucking, he's gonna fucking take ages, that bloke there, you know. That second bloke, he's got more hair than him. He's going to fucking take longer than him, he is, that bloke there. That third guy over there, he's fucking, that third guy, he's a fucking bear. He's, <laughs> he's a bear, he's up at the sink playing with a salmon. <laughs> The barber's playing dead. <laughs> I don't think it's fair. I think the barber should have the same system as the supermarket. The eight airs or less counter. <laughs> You'd still have those miserable bastards behind you, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> Knocking in the queue going, he's got nine hairs. <laughs> he's got nine hairs. <laughs> think problem fucking solved. <laughs> And Grant, and it always the way you go in there, the keys are checked. This is what I hate the most, right? You go in there, he goes, bzzz, done. And then he still has a cheek to hold the fucking mirror up behind my head. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? Old Franco, you've outdone yourself. <laughs> I love what you've done with my skin, yeah. <laughs> we got any van drivers in? Any van drivers in? <laughs> if there are any in, you're hiding from me, you know? It's just like. This weird thing, I don't know, again, all, Grant, all the other guys here, I don't know if you experienced this, you'll be walking along, walking on the road, mind your own business, just going about your day, just walking along, a van will go past. <laughs> Somebody will lean out the van, SLAP IT! <laughs> Why? It ain't like we don't fucking know. <laughs> I mean, as they just do it as part of their working day, you know what I mean? Like co-driver to van driver. I'll tell you what, mate, I've, I've, uh, I've had my mortgage is piling up on me. I've had an electricity bill to destroy a third world country. Excuse me a moment. Baldy! <laughs> and the gas bill's due next week as well. So. <laughs> no other profession does it. You don't get David Dimbleby on question time. A question from a lady in the orange jacket behind a slappy! <laughs> I reckon in America now, they're very close to a cure for baldness, right? And I, I hate them using that expression, cure for baldness. Because as soon as you say cure, that implies that this is an illness. And it's not. It's just the way things are, right? I mean, being bald's got a lot of the traits of an illness. You know, you can take tablets, you can rub cream in. If you have a transplant operation, you can even have surgery. But sadly, unlike a genuine illness, you cannot get a day off work sick. <laughs> no boss is going to stand for it, are they? Nine o'clock, Monday morning. Hello, boss. <laughs> Can't come into work today. <laughs> Feeling a bit bald. <laughs> You'll still get people abusing it, wouldn't you? Throwing a sickie, turning up for work next day, full head of hair. Yeah, I'm a lot better, thanks. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> Must have been one of them 24-hour baldnesses. <laughs> This I've got to find out. Any women here tonight body pierced? Seriously, I'm just trying to get is a, a lady here. Where are you pierced, love? Nose, nose, nose and a belly button. Any, any other women pierced in the belly? Lady over there, belly button? No. Where are you pierced? Mouth, ears, nose. Mouth, ears, nose? Yeah. Right, any more? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? You've had your tongue done, right? Because uh, mouth, ears, nose, tongue. Just one with, with the belly button done, which is unusual, because that's the most common, apparently, is women getting the belly button pierced, right? I don't understand why women get the belly button pierced, right? I mean, why decorate an area around which I don't tend to dwell? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the belly button is just a small service station on my journey south. <laughs> You decorate that, and that is basically a speed bump for my tongue, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when I was on tour, I had this guy in the front row, right? He was over, way over on the left, long front row, big theatre, way over on the left. He's got ears done, both ears done. He's got the tongue, eyebrow rings in there, right? Stud on the nose, but also on the nose. It's like a, a metal bone straight through his nose, like that. Loads of metal everywhere, like that. You know, I didn't spot him at first, but then I caught him out of the corner of my eye, because he was sitting over in the corner like that. That's just too much fucking metal in one person, surely. Can you imagine if this poor sod ever gets involved in a crash on the motorway? Loads of cars crumple up in a big pile-up, up to the fire brigade. Don't worry, mate, we'll cut you out in a minute. No, it's all right, I like it. 
<laughs> you can make me. I was, I'm on a train the other day. I'm on a train the other day. I'm such a big mouth. I can't let things go. You know when you spot something, you've got to have a, have a pop in you. I'm sitting there. I'm watching this geezer opposite me. And in the end, I, I had to say something, right? I got up. I went up to him. I went, excuse me, mate. I just don't think anybody could find that attractive. He went, I've been stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> You can't misread it, can't you, really? Because <laughs> this is this girl, this girl came up to me one time, I'm comparing the gig, right? And in the interval, I'm sitting over by the bar, and she comes over to me, and she goes, I'm really glad you never saw me while he's talking about body piercing. I said, why is that? She goes, I've been pierced. I went, where well, you been pierced? And she points down, right, and she's got a crop top on, right? And her belly button down, right? Again, we went, had a belly button down. And, I look, and I'm sitting down, so imagine, I'm eyeball level with the belly button. I looked at it, I went, I'm sorry, love. I said, but it doesn't have to look sore. She goes, yeah, it is sore. She goes, I only had it done three days ago, but I love it. I'm going to get other things done as well. I said, like what? And she said, I'm thinking of getting my clitoris pierced, right? Yeah, I fucking winced as well, right? <laughs> I thought, getting your clitoris pierced. I said to her, why? She went, make it easier for blokes to find. Now, I thought... <laughs> Didn't you not think that's a little bit drastic? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake, give your bloke a map. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Get a magic marker, draw an arrow on the inner thigh. <laughs> Don't pierce it. I had this picture in my mind of her and her boyfriend in bed together. He's at one end, she's at the other. He's throwing pieces of a magnetic chest out. <laughs> <laughs> Working on the theory that if the bishop sticks, he's in. <laughs> That's a big fad, though, the old body piercing. The other one that's died out, I, I think it's pretty much died out, is the old magic eye pictures. The magic eye pictures, oh, can you do them? Can you do them? I, I can't do them. I'm, I've always wondered if it was an age thing, you know what I mean? Because I, I try it. People come up to you in the street, don't they? They go, what is that? 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 <laughs> and I look at it, and I really do try. I'll be honest with you. I look at it, and I go, well, <laughs> that looks like a load of lemons <laughs> in a line. And he goes, no, that's a dolphin. <laughs> and I'm thinking, nutter, nutter. <laughs> he goes, no, 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 look at it for half an hour. I don't want to look at a picture for half an hour. If you want me to see a dolphin, paint a fucking dolphin. <laughs> I'm a busy man. Don't do a shit picture and pass it off as a fucking trick. <laughs> and then they go, no, 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 relax your eyes. <laughs> relax my eyes? I don't understand that as a concept. I can put my feet up. <laughs> Relax my eyes, no. I've never once phoned up a mate and said, Terry, I can't come out tonight, I'm knackered, I've been looking all day. <laughs> Round here in the East End, we've had the magic eye concept for many years now. You go in certain pubs on a Saturday night in Bethnal Green, you stare at a bloke at the bar long enough and suddenly you see the inside of a fucking ambulance. <laughs> I've got to say, before we crack, people were wearing shirt sleeves. It's just like, well, not just shirt sleeves, obviously, that would be quite silly, really. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a new thing from Paris, right? We just wear the sleeve. <laughs> it's easy to put on. No, I just, uh, what I mean is short sleeves, that's what I meant to say, because like, today, we just suddenly, we, we had a summer, didn't we? <laughs> it happened, we've been waiting for it, well, you know, some of us stayed in, just special, you know. <laughs> And it finally turned up, didn't it? Which is amazing. It's quite weird about it, is because as soon as the sun, happened, like we spent all winter going, oh, when's it going to be hot? 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 And then we get one day hot, and we go, oh fucking hell, I can't cope. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> I've got to cross the road. <laughs> I'll never make it. <laughs> We just don't go, because as soon as the hot weather comes out, we love it, don't we? We just go out straight away, we want to get a tan, we want to get a tan, because we think, I'll get a tan and I'll look well, won't I? <laughs> it's like when we go abroad, isn't it? People go up and say, are you ill or British? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's like, we just can't cope with the hot weather. It's OK during the day, it's not so bad during the day, even though it's quite exhausting, but night time is when we suffer in this country, isn't it? Because, like, we haven't got air conditioning, have we? You know what I mean, when we go to bed? It's just not worth the expense for one night a year, is it? <laughs> It's like guys who drive convertible cars, isn't it? <laughs> we see them driving around town, and to get their full money worth out of that car, they always leave. The, they bring the lid down a little too early in the year, and leave it down a little too late, don't they? You're easy to spot and drive around town, going, "Oh yes, I love the feel of snow in my face." <laughs> <laughs> 
But it's the same. Daytime's okay. Nighttime's when we suffer. Because we know, we know what's going to happen at nighttime. It's going to be fucking murder when we go to bed, isn't it? There's no air conditioning, like I said. So if it's going to be up tonight, it's going to be up tonight. You're looking at the sky, it's going to be very hot, very hot. <laughs> Got to prepare for this. So you take all your clothes off there. Every item of clothing comes off. You get in bed, just the three blankets and the sheet tonight. <laughs> Because you're going for it, aren't you? You're going for it. And you're laying in bed, aren't you? You're laying in bed and you think to yourself, no, it's still too hot, it's hot, it's too hot, it's too hot. Get rid of a blanket. No, 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 I'm still too hot. Get rid of the other two blankets. No, no, I'm still too hot. Get rid of the sheet and tell you think, no, I'm British, I'm naked, fuck it, I need that sheet. <laughs> I have to be covered by something, even cling film. It's just... <laughs> it's a gesture, mostly, you know? And also, also, the pillow, the pillow. The pillow, when you go to bed at night, why, scientists, whatever they're doing around the world, right, there might be one in here, I don't know, whatever you're working on, knock it on the head, get all the scientists to work on a pillow that stays cold on the top side. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You go to bed at night, don't you? And you go, it's like a little ambush waiting for you, isn't it? Right? You always get mugged, don't you? You lay down, you lay down, you edit some pillow, you go, oh, it's lovely and cold, it's lovely and cold, lovely, lovely and cold, lovely and cold, lovely and cold. But eight seconds go by, my fucking head's on fire. Well, <laughs> But we know what to do. We've got years of experience behind us, don't we? We know, we're practised, we know what to do. We just flip the pillow over, don't we? <laughs> flip the pillow over and we're down again. Ooh, lovely and gold. Like five seconds later, all right, I'm on fire. Flip the pillow. <laughs> lovely and gold. I'm on fire. Flip the pillow. It's like kipping on a fucking kebab, isn't it? <laughs> You've got a Turkish bloke next to your bed. Lovely pillow, lovely pillow. <laughs> And driving, driving in the hot weather, you'll be driving along. We've all experienced this. You'll be driving along, you're up at a set of traffic lights, somebody comes up alongside you. <laughs> and you're thinking to yourself, that is a bit loud. <laughs> For a Walkman. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. You do, you get these guys put up alongside you. <laughs> This, no, this isn't a car, is it? This guy has bought a hippodrome and stuck a fucking gearbox on it. <laughs> it's a new model from Ford, the Ford Disco. That's what it is. <laughs> can only drive round a roundabout if there's a handbag in the middle. <laughs> You've got bouncers on the door of your own car. <laughs> well, you know, so you can't drive, mate, you're wearing trainers, fuck off. <laughs> Also, things change for us British people during the, during the summer, right? Because, like, normally, normally, when you're arranging to meet people, you say, uh, I'll, meet you I'll meet you in the pub. Or, I'll meet you in the coffee shop. And then during the summer, it all changes, don't you? And suddenly it's, uh, I'll meet you outside the pub. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you outside the coffee shop. <laughs> and that's where it all starts to go wrong, isn't it? Because you're outside the coffee shop, aren't you? And you're sitting there, you've got your cup of coffee, and you're sitting there, and you think to yourself, oh, yeah, it's very continental. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck it, a fly. <laughs> <laughs> and you sit there, trouble with arranging to meet somebody outside. You're sitting here with your cup of coffee. If you look up, if you see your mate from like 50 yards away, you look away, don't you? You have to look away and pretend you ain't seen him. Because if you acknowledge that you've seen your mate from 50 yards away, you've got 50 yards of him walking towards you and you're going... <laughs> Wait till they get about five feet away to go, oh, hello! There's <laughs> <laughs> a girl in the front row going, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I made it up. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Before we crack on, I need to ask a question because I like to find out what kind of crowd we've got in. Um, have we got any, any vegetarians here tonight? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Couple, of, couple of chaps there. Your, your name, sir, with a cap? Ben. ben, Ben, how long have you been a vegetarian, Ben? Five years. Five years. And why did you become a vegetarian? Because you like the idea of it. You don't like the idea of it. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you don't like the idea of somebody sticking an iron bar up your ass. Because <laughs> if you don't like the idea of that, pound to a penny, you're going to fucking do it, isn't it? <laughs> Have I misunderstood, Ben? Yeah. You don't like the idea of eating meat, is that it? Fair enough to you. Listen, Ben, I've been mulling it over for a while now, but you people really do piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm being, I'm being, ben, I'm being unfair, mate. I'm being unfair. <laughs> Looks a little bit angry. <laughs> Mind you, even if we have a fight, ain't like he's gonna win, is it? <laughs> Goes, hits me and goes, oh, no, I've hurt flesh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Ben, I'm generalising. It's not actually... I, I, I'm, I'll correct myself. I'm not... It's not vegetarian. It's got to, what it is, my, I started dating this girl who's a vegetarian and she's trying to convert me, right? I don't think that's right. Ben, you, you want to be a vegetarian? Fair enough. I want to eat meat. Fair enough. I think that's the way it should be. If you want to do that, I want to... Yeah? yeah? Even Stevens, that's the way it is. I mean, the way I look at it, though, Ben, let's, let's face it. You want to eat vegetables for healthy eating. I want to eat meat. You think I'm unhealthy. But the way I look at it is my food shits and pisses on yours. <laughs> <laughs> So don't talk to me about healthy eating. <laughs> no, as I say, she's trying to convert me. And I don't think it's fair, as I say, right? I think we should, you know, if you want to be vegetarian, up to you, if I want to eat meat, up to me, right? But she is trying to convert me. And she, she chooses her battleground, right? She waits. She's always the same. She waits till I start eating my dinner. And she's straight in my face. Straight in there. Right? She's up to me. You know burgers? <laughs> you know burgers? <laughs> Burgers, 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 burgers. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, not that well. <laughs> not on a social level. <laughs> she goes, you know burgers? They make them out of eyes and penises. <laughs> now, I don't know about you people, but that is how I want to eat my eyes and penises. <laughs> if I've got to eat them, I want to eat them in that anonymous burger form. <laughs> I don't want a plate of fries. <laughs> Next to him, a one-eyed trouser snake staring back at me. <laughs> I don't want to start chewing my dinner and it's getting bigger in my fucking mouth. <laughs> what does wind me up about vegetarians? I've got to be honest with you. Ben, you do love to grand stage it a little bit in the vegetarian community, don't you? You go to vegetarians and go, do you eat meat? Oh, no, I am a vegetarian. <laughs> and then you go, do you eat fish? Oh, yeah, I eat fish. So what's the deal there, then? You only eat things that can't manage to walk properly. <laughs> Ben's going, yeah, if I'm really hungry, I'll have a pissed cow. <laughs> or a sheep with a veruca. <laughs> Oh dear, been on tour, been on tour, going on tour again. I love it, I love going all around the country. It's, it's, the dodgy bit is the driving, you've got loads of driving to do, right? I mean, before we carry on, we've got a lot of drivers here tonight? A lot of people drive? Yeah? You can't answer me, it's like, you're all scared, right? Like, <laughs> 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 oh fuck, he's got me. <laughs> I was, I'll, I'll ask again, we've got many drivers in? Yeah! There you go, safety in numbers, you know what <laughs> Sorry, come on, I'll take you all on. <laughs> Who's been dumped for speeding? Show of hands. That's not bad, that's not bad. Big fella there. How fast were you going when they caught you, mate? <coughs> 45 miles an hour on a motorway, you <laughs> crew. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call a tailback, darling. <laughs> Oh, I'll bet they're angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, 45. Anybody else? Who's been done? Gentleman there with a moustache. How fast were you going, sir? 90. 90. 90. Now I am assuming a motorway. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's like, no, nah, parking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it's here, good space. Fuck it, you go for it, didn't you? <laughs> What's your name, big fella? Ron. Ron, so Ron. Oh, big fella. That's a big name for a big fella, isn't it? <laughs> I am Ron and I'm a big fella. <laughs> I do big fella things for a living. <laughs> I don't do none of that tiny fella stuff. No, no. <laughs> I wake up in the morning, people phone me, I've got a mobile, and I say, Ron, we need some big fella stuff done. <laughs> turn up, once in, a, once in a blue moon, they fuck it up, and it's a tiny fella job. I say, fuck off, I don't do that. <laughs> I've got a union. <laughs> so, Ron. <laughs> Oh, he's still there. Well done. So, I thought, if I was you, I'd have nipped out then. <laughs> you fucking lost it. <laughs> what do you do, Ron? Because you're a big, big old bloke, aren't you? Two's water. 
Thames water. Yeah. Cut me. Why do I need a big bloke for that? <laughs> you can just pick it up a little bit at a time, surely, you know. <laughs> Thames water, you make me laugh. Did you know this? It's like, think about Thames water. I love it when they have those things about, you know, hose pipe bands and that, right? Because the other year they were talking about the hose pipe band. And it was like a fucking, it was like a flood coming down from the sky, wasn't it? Like, Wimbledon got wiped out and they're still on, don't forget, who's pipe band? <laughs> still in operation, right? I'd fucking know a guy past my house, right? <laughs> <laughs> what made me laugh was when, uh, was when what's his name? Um, Saddam Hussein, when he was threatening our country, he said he was going to send, like, death squads over here to pollute our water supplies, right? And I had this image in my mind, he's like, this highly trained Iraqi death squad, right? And they, they come along in a submarine, right, and they pop up in the channel and they swim ashore in a rowing boat and they've got their little fucking gear, like all the nerve agent stuff, and they make their way up to London in the dark, all secrets real. They get up to a Thames reservoir, right? Thames water reservoir, and they get the, the, the nerve agent and they pour it in to kill us all in London, like, pour it in like that, and it travels four yards down the pipe, goes out a fucking leak. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same in terms of water, Von, but I heard that in Essex water, they revealed that 5% of their water is sewage. Yeah? Probably right. <laughs> Probably right. I, mean, I, I'm not, I mean, some people might be shocked, but I wouldn't be that bothered about that if I lived in Essex, as long, <laughs> as, long as that 5% was evenly distributed amongst the other 95. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be filling a kettle up at the sink. <laughs> Sorry, love, it'll have to be coffee again. <laughs> Can you imagine having a shower in Essex? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck it, I'll have to have a bath now. <laughs> so what do you do at Thames Water? What do you actually do as a job? You clear the leaks. You clear... <laughs> 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 you clear the leaks. You got your equipment with you? Yeah. <laughs> So, Ron, you were doing 90 mile an hour. That's what I'll go off at a tangent, sorry about that. You're doing 90 mile an hour, right? And uh, what, what was the case? Why was you going so fast? I just like going fast. You just like going fast, right? And is that your wife? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, you're going on. Was it, was it a motorway we're talking about? It wasn't. Fucking hell, where, where was it then? Yeah, through Colchester. Through Col Not through Colchester. <laughs> what, town centre? 90 mile an hour? <laughs> Mind you, I've been there, I can't blame you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm doing a steady 30. Fuck it, go just up! <laughs> so, doing 90 mile an hour, and how did the old Bill capture you? They did, it was a camera. It was a camera. <laughs> 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 That's like Robin and Bank, and there's old Bill sitting outside, isn't it? <laughs> Who's been actually captured by the police? Like, uh, police pulled them over. Uh, lady over here? Is you, you were how fast? What's your name? Louise. Louise. How fast were you going, Louise? Uh, 96. 96. <laughs> fucking wanker. <laughs> 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 Probably chasing after you to fix her, fix her fucking leak. <laughs> so, you're doing 96, Louise, and how did the old Bill catch you? What happened? They come up behind you. <laughs> For the people who didn't hear, she said, he came up behind me, flashing lights, but I couldn't hear him because my music was too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, you'll back me up on this. There is something about driving along, along the road at 96 mile an hour. When you see that blue flashing light in your rear view mirror, there is something, when you're driving along at 96 mile an hour, I'll be having no time. <laughs> Lovely music. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no time. And there's something about that blue flashing light in your rear view mirror that brings your highway code flooding back. <laughs> <laughs> you drive along, be over no time, blue flashing light, oh fucking hell, mirror signal maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> Indicate left, change down through the gears. <laughs> Handbrake neutral, hazard lights on. <laughs> As if the old Bill's gonna walk up to Louise and go, Louise, you do realise you were doing 96 miles an hour? But excellent highway coat. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> and how many of them was involved, Louise, with this incident? 
two old Bill. I'm gonna, this, this, why, that's why you got nicked, because there was two old Bill. If the old Bill, listen up, right? If the old Bill pulled you up the speed in, right? There has to be two coppers to nick you. One of them nicks you, and the other one turns up at court and acts as a witness on the other one's behalf, gives evidence, right? If the coppers on their own, they have to have the radar gun with them or the gear, the video gear, the computer thing in the car. If the coppers on their own and they ain't got the radar gear on or the, the computer thing, can't nick you. Don't matter how fast you're going. You could be doing 112 down the motorway. Cannot fucking nick you. Now, I know it's a stupid law, but fuck it, it's in our favour. <laughs> <laughs> there to be abused, clearly, right? You know, what will happen is they'll pull you over, they'll pull you over, and they'll give you the once over, like lean on you a little bit, give you a bit of pressure, right? And then they'll more likely say something like this. They'll go, Do you know what? Today, I'm in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided to let you go. But now you know, didn't you? So you can turn around and go, You can't do fuck all that! Mind you, I'd just think that if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd keep that victory very much in my own head. <laughs> of course, when you tell your mates, you go, well, I fucking told him, didn't I, you know? <laughs> it's really weird, actually. Um, a, lot of people, uh, a lot of people think I'm a big sporting buff that I know all about sport, and it's not right, like and I don't. <laughs> just because I was on, they think it's all over. People go, oh, you know about sport. People come up to me in the street and go, well, what's around about Leicester? I go, well, it's about 100 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Did have a laugh on it, though, over the years. We, had, we did have good fun on it, I must admit. And uh, there was an incident I'm going to tell you about, which wasn't on the... Um, they didn't broadcast this bit, right? It was cut out. We started off in the, in the, um, the field of sportsmen round, me and Dave, and the story ended up in the name game, right? So what we had... <laughs> We've got a few sports around, and they brought on, we're blindfolded, they brought on Bob Nudd, the British angling champion, right? Do you know who he is? No? <laughs> I didn't fucking know either. <laughs> and this guy's got like all the, the angling gear on, the, the little hat, the waders, he's got the fishing pole, fishing line, fish on the end of the line, right? So, trying to work out who he is, and I've ended up going along the pole, down the line, and I've grabbed hold of this fucking fish, right? And I'm blindfolding, I've just thought, you can imagine going down the spit, what's going on, what's going on? Oh, fucking hell, like, all this slimy, smelly, gunky stuff all over me, and I didn't like it at all. Unbeknownst to me, Dave, he's grabbed hold of it and all, right? So we're both covered in this slimy, gunky stuff. Now, we used to film the show straight through, no stopping. So we next go on to the, the name game, right? So we're sitting down. They didn't give us a towel or nothing to dry our hands off, right? So me and Dave, we're rubbing our hands on the carpet like this, right? <laughs> we're thinking, fuck it, it's not our ass, is it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we sit up. Nick slings the envelope over, and as soon as we sit up, I'm covering the envelope. He goes, got the name game. You've got 90 seconds starting from now. Took the cards out, did the first card, did the second card, did the third card. Flipped over the fourth card, and it was Nick Faldo's caddy. Right? Now, for the people who don't know... <laughs> for the people who don't know, Nick Faldo's caddy, her name is Fanny Sunnison, right? <laughs> so, I flipped it over, looked at it, turned out to Dave, went, first word, smell my finger. <laughs> and they only bleed and cut it out, didn't they? <laughs> I'm smothering fish, got a name like that, I'm working at speed, where the fuck did they think I was going to go with that? <laughs> The only reason I knew it was cut out, I've never seen the programme myself, the only reason I knew it was cut out was that I just, by coincidence, happened to phone up Harry Thompson, the producer of the show. We were having a chat and he went, oh, look, I've got to go in a minute, Lee, he's coming on in a minute. And I said to him, oh, did you leave that bit in? Smell my finger? He went, no, I had to cut it out. I went, oh, you bastard, right? And we had a little rumble on the phone at the end. He goes, you pissed off with me. I said, well, a little bit, Harry. I said, but life's too short, you're a mate, forget about it, right? And the reason I was pissed off was, right, when I'm in the studio, when I've turned around and to Dave, I've gone, smell my finger, 300 people in the audience have gone, woof! Big fuck off laugh from them, right? And they had to chop 20 seconds out of the name game that week. Because as they've gone, I'm in fucking bits as well, right? <laughs> Dave Gower has gone, our guest has gone, Nick Hancock, poor sod, he spun his chair and he's fucking laughing like that. <laughs> I look over the way, Rory's gone there, guest has gone, Gary Lineker's sitting in the middle. <laughs> oh dear. Can I ask, uh, I, I love chucking out questions to the audience. Can I just ask a question? We got, um, we got anybody here in love? <laughs> just, just person over there, gentleman here, you in love, sir? I'm not, I'm not gonna, just, just fell in love. It's wonderful, isn't it? I'm not gonna disrespect you at all. How, how long has this been going on now? 
A week. Fucking respect. Oh, bless. Bless. I mean, this video's due out in November, right? You know, hoping you're going to hang on in there till then. <laughs> <laughs> be fucking horrible, you know. He's on the video at Christmas watching it going, She left me! <laughs> <gasps> I loved her! <laughs> I remember she left me because I mentioned it in a crowd. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Colin. Colin. Colin, one week in. Well done, mate. Well done. Can anybody beat Colin? Anybody gone further down the road than that? <laughs> Gentleman here. Your name, sir? Mark, how long have you been in love? Five and a half years. Five and a half years. I've never got anywhere near that, right? <laughs> Two weeks tops. That's, <laughs> that's the best I've ever managed. You know what I mean? Is it still as good as it ever was? It's better. Better? What, you're involved with more people now? <laughs> 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 I find two weeks, I'm just, I, tr I go for it. That's my trouble. I really do go for it. I think everybody does, especially the first date. When you go on a first date, you really go over it, don't you? You wash everywhere. <laughs> you leave no skin unturned, do you? You know, really go for it. You have a good old scrub, don't you? Sometimes you scrub a little bit too hard and think, fuck it, I'll stay in. <laughs> <laughs> but you just go for it. There's always that amazing thing on it. I, I, bet, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, that first date scenario where you maybe caught a movie, had a meal or something, and then you come into that awkward part in the end of the evening of the first date. As you're driving a home, you're driving a home, and then you've got the dilemma you're going to face, aren't you? Because you think, and as you pull up to her flat, you're thinking, well, like, if I park up outside her flat first night, seems a little bit presumptuous, <laughs> particularly if I apply to the council for a permit. <laughs> <laughs> but if I sort of half park and leave the engine running, then it looks like I'm not interested. So you've got a bit of a dilemma, ain't you? So what I tend to do is drive down the street at high speed and kick her out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure if she's clinging to the bumper bar, she's interested. <laughs> <laughs> but that first time back at somebody's flat, it's so bizarre, isn't it? Because you go, you go up to the flat. It doesn't matter if it's a man's flat or a woman's flat, whether it's gay, straight, whatever, right? Whoever's flat it is, you play out a little scenario. Whoever's flat it is, the first person walks up, they get their keys out, they put the key at the door, and they always turn around and go, <gasps> you'll have to excuse the mess. <laughs> <laughs> and you always come back with, you should see the state of mind, please. <laughs> and she opens the door, you walk in, and there's a turd on the coffee table. <laughs> And you're thinking, fuck it, I'll give you that one, love. <laughs> I just cannot compete on your terms. <laughs> and we've got our heads stuffed full of cliches from Hollywood romantic movies, and we try to emulate those movies, don't we? And the famous one from the Hollywood romantic movies, the couple come back to the big Hollywood mansion, they've been out all night, and they come back and they shut the door. As soon as they're inside, they're groping, they're snogging, they're fondling, they're caressing, they're tearing clothes off each other, aren't they? And they're making their way to the bedroom. Every three yards, an item of clothing hits the floor. Every three, it's like a pervy Hansel and Gretel trail <laughs> all the way to the bedroom. And we've all seen that scene in loads of movies, and that's in our heads, isn't it? And on that first date, we try to emulate that scene. But the trouble is, we don't live in houses as big as they do in Hollywood. <laughs> we live in a one-bedroom flat. And for us to get the same distance, we've got to start on a fucking bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like the first two weeks. She's just tearing the clothes off. As soon as you're indoors, sex, tear the clothes off, let's have sex, tear the clothes off. Your fucking maintenance bills are horrendous, right? And then after that, two weeks, then you hit week three, and you start, just before sex, you start to undress more slowly, don't you? You're not in a seductive way, you're just undressing more slowly. Sex is still great, but you're undressing slowly. Give it four weeks, and what I don't like after four weeks, the folding of the clothes. <laughs> The folding of the clothes before sex, I think it's just killing the moment, isn't it? You know, give it five weeks, she's fucking ironing, isn't she? It's, like, <laughs> it's just not on, it isn't on, you know? And so you have to spice up the love life, right? And they reckon the best way of spicing up the love life is to talk during sex, right? I'm going to lead the way in a moment, I'm going to chuck a question at you, I'm going to lead the way initially. I talk during sex, quite happy to admit that, you cannot fucking stop me, right? I'm babbling away at it, I really am. I fucking go for it, I do, right? So now I'll throw the question out to you good people and I'm hoping for an honest response. Hands up who talks during sex here tonight? Who talks during sex? Just people here, all these young people down here, respect to you, I'm not gonna diss you in any way, shape or form. All I'm gonna say is back me up on this. When you talk during sex, you will agree, especially the gentleman down here, when you talk during sex, 
you can't talk in normal conversational speech patterns. <laughs> when you talk during sex, you have to talk in, in a stylized way, don't you? And I don't care what music you're into, whether it be rave music, heavy metal, easy listening, rock and roll. If you want to talk during sex, you have to talk like a soul singer. <laughs> you have to be Barry fucking White. <laughs> Oh, baby. <laughs> I love what you do to me, girl. <laughs> do it one more time. <laughs> you have to talk like that, don't you? It's just not acceptable to go, excuse me, would you mind sucking my penis? <laughs> if you want that sexual relationship to continue successfully, like, like Mark down here, you have to be honest during sex. I'm guaranteeing that you're honest during your sexual relationship. Is this not true, Mark? <laughs> Very honest. You have to be honest in a sexual relationship. Colin, take that as a tip, mate. Be honest, right? None of this faking orgasm nonsense. Don't get into that. Don't get into that. Blokes never fake orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why? Because we want the fucking orgasm. <laughs> we don't care how long it takes. We'll phone up work. I'm taking a week off. I'm going for it. <laughs> we want the orgasm, right? And let's face it, there's a certain amount of, for blokes, there's a certain amount of evidence to prove whether a man has or hasn't had an orgasm. Even if he tries to be crafty and slings a condom in the bin, she's in the corner. It's empty! <laughs> Women do fake orgasms. This is the sad truth of the matter. Women do fake... It may come as a shock to some blokes here tonight. Women do fake orgasms. I'm only bringing the news. Don't shoot the messenger, right? The reason, and the women are going to go with me on this, the reason women fake orgasms is because the blokes they're in bed with are fucking crap in bed. <laughs> Yeah. One bloke booing there. I don't know if that left. <laughs> One bloke boo. Oh, oh that gave me away, didn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm only doing the noise she does when we're in bed. <laughs> boo. It's true, though. Women do fake orgasms, right? I mean, the bloke, the bloke, the bloke, he's having a go, bless him. He's given his best shot, he's there, but he hasn't got a fucking clue. He's there for ages. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a fantastic crowd. Thanks very much for coming out today. I know it's hot in here. You've been brilliant. Thanks a lot. See you again. Take care. <laughs>